You're not feeling like yourself anymore. You're not alone. Whether you're concerned about your weight, your energy level, a lack of sex drive, or hormone imbalance, solutions are waiting for you at Nava Health. With a technology-driven approach, Nava's medical experts craft custom plans that adapt as you progress, optimizing your health. Start feeling better now at navacenter.com forward slash POD. That's N-A-V-A center.com forward slash POD. Or call 855-680-6282. Results may vary. Local news, national news, even feel-good news. Delivering the topics that are relevant to you. That's why I listen to Joe. He covers it all. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Right as we come on the air, we've got breaking news out of Alaska. As the Alaska Department of Public Safety is reporting a plane crash uh, just outside of Fairbanks. Here's what's really interesting about this plane crash. The plane that crashed is a Douglas DC-4. Now, you may not know what a Douglas DC-4 is. If you're not over the age of, oh, I don't know, 80, you may not know what a Douglas DC-4 is. They have not made Douglas DC-4s since 1947. That's the last time a DC-4 was manufactured, 1947. Uh, the Douglas Aircraft Company doesn't even exist Anymore. These are usually used in third world countries at this point, probably for running drugs and other things. Uh, but a Douglas DC 4 crashes in Fairbanks, Alaska. We don't have any details on uh, injuries or deaths associated with that crash. Also, here in uh, Florida, as Laurel just reported uh, at the top of the hour during her newscast, the, uh, the, the doddering old fool has made his way from the White House here to Florida. He's in Tampa talking about abortion rights and this, that, and the other, thinking that the Democrats are going to be able to flip Florida blue. But I think there is at least one thing that President Biden said that we can all agree upon. Sense. I don't know why he's, we're surprised by Trump. How many times does he have to prove we can't be trusted? <laughs> Let me run that back just in case you missed it. You know, if I have my way in the next four years, I'm going to make community college free. Oh, hang on. Different. Let me get the right cut again. Sorry about that. In a sense, I don't know why he's, we're surprised by Trump. How many times does he have to prove we can't be trusted? How many times does he have to prove that we can't be trusted? Yes, exactly right. And then the crowd, like, oh, yes, yes, absolutely, yes. All right, pivot. Here's what's happening right now. At this very minute, eight minutes ago, in fact, at five o'clock, uh, the, the meeting of the minds of the Orange County Public Schools are meeting at the OCPS headquarters uh, near downtown in the Creative Village. As the school board is getting together, they, the meeting started at five o'clock, in which they are going to decide whether to place a referendum on the ballot this November to continue the half-cent sales tax. So this is going to be a three-step process. First, the school board has to approve putting it on the ballot. It has to get put on the ballot. And then whether or not it passes is up to you coming up in November because uh, you'll get a chance to vote on it. So it's kind of a two-step process. It has to get put on the ballot, and then you have to approve it or reject it. It's up to you. But I, I'm going to, I, I, as, as, a, as a Republican, as a registered Republican, as a fiscal conservative, I'll be the first to say reject every new tax. Uh, Mayor Jerry Demings the, of the Orange County Commission uh, Jerry Demings one, wanted to implement a penny sales tax. He has now punted that for a couple of years. Uh, I I would be most certainly opposed to a one cent sales tax increase. But this half cent sales tax continuation is a different animal. Hear me out. We as conservative Republicans, believe in local control of our schools. We don't like federal... Uh, the, the, the federal government sticking their nose in our business when it comes to, especially when it comes to education. Orange County schools 
are jacked up. Orange County schools have serious problems. If you have a student that's in an Orange County school, you know the schools have problems. Primarily, it's not the kind of problems that a half penny penny sales tax is going to fix. They're mostly employment problems, as in they don't have enough teachers and they don't have the right teachers. But as someone who believes in local control of education, we can't demand local control of education and then starve it of money and resources. And with the sheer number of people that are moving to Orlando, my sons, as an example, my twin boys, Black and Decker, they go to a school that's not more than two years old, a high school. And they have already had to construct portable units outside for the overflow because the schools have too many students. So while I look at most sales taxes and say, no, absolutely not, or any kind of tax increases, I say, no, absolutely not. I would say, I hope that the, and I, and I presume that they will. I don't think there's going to be, uh, I would say any discussion. I think they have to have discussion, but I, I doubt there's going to be much discussion uh, this afternoon. The meeting starts at five. They could probably wrap this up by about 5.04 p.m. and say, yes, let's put it on the ballot. Because at the very least, let it go to a public vote. Let Orange County citizens decide whether or not to continue the half cent sales tax. Now, I, I will say that, uh, that that I would vote in favor of this in November if it was on the ballot because I believe that this is exactly what we argue for. Local control, local funding of our education. But I I will point out that there will be some uh, less than genuous, some disingenuous language that will be used to sell this. And it drives me nuts. You will hear people say, People that are that, that are uh, speaking in favor of a sales tax uh, continuation. You will hear people say, "And this won't raise taxes." Voting yes won't raise taxes, and what they mean by that is it won't raise taxes any more than we've already raised the taxes, because it is a continuation of a tax, not an addition of a tax. I still find that to be disingenuous. I guarantee you that's how they're going to sell it. And that's going to drive me batty. And I'm going to point it out time and time again, that voting against it means your taxes will go down. Now, these are sales taxes, not property taxes. And they're certainly not income taxes. We don't have an income tax here in Florida. So these are sales taxes. So keep in mind that sales taxes come from everybody who buys anything, almost anything. There are certain things that are sales tax tax exempt. But this comes from from anybody who buys almost anything in Orange County throughout the year. And you know, as well as I know, that we have millions of tourists that come through our city and spend ample amounts of money that will be taxed and will pay for our schools. Not the majority, nope, it won't be the majority, but the school district does, says it's about half, that about half that tax uh, gets paid by tourists. So are you, are you down for the continuation of the sales tax? Assuming it's going to be on the ballot, which I would, I would put all my chips on the table and say, yes, of course it's going to be on the ballot come November. Will you vote for it or against it? 844-580-WDBO. It's 844-580-9326. You can use the open mic in the WDBO app. Now, all that having been said, that's that's just the money angle. That's the that's for, you know for capital improvements, that's to build schools, that's to improve schools. Uh, that is for infrastructure. None of that money goes to funding teachers. That is a different budget, that is a different issue. Oh, and it's a big issue. And aside from Aside from that, this is for capital expenditures and aside from teachers are a different budget. 
this vote does not speak to the leadership of Orange County Schools and how well this money will be spent. It's basically a blank check. And we have to then, as good citizens, stick our noses in the business of the Orange County Public School Board to make sure that they're held accountable for how this money is going to be spent. That it's not spent frivolously. There's no waste, fraud, or abuse of this money. 844-580-WDBO. It's 844-580-9326. You can use the open mic in the WDBO app. We're following the crash of a DC-4 crash near Fairbanks, Alaska. Uh, We'll keep an update on that and find out if there were people on board that plane. Obviously, there's a a pilot on board that plane. And we'll hear more from the doddering old man who came to Florida today to tell us his vision of America. That'll be coming up straight ahead. Stay with us here on The Joe Kelly Show. Did someone say free ride home? If you like carpooling or vanpooling, but worry about getting stuck at the office, relax. With Commuter Connections... You can get up to six free rides home for unexpected emergencies or unscheduled overtime, even if you're commuting just a few times a week. Register or renew for Guaranteed Ride Home today at commuterconnections.org or call 800-745-RIDE. Some restrictions apply. Now, no. Now, the three big things you need to know. Powered by Hard Rock Bet. Three. A new Johnny Cash album is coming out more than two decades after his death. Universal Music is issuing Songwriter, a collection of 11 previously unreleased demos the country legend recorded in 1993. According to Variety, all of them are self-written originals by Johnny Cash. Two. U.S. journalist Evan Gershkovich's appeal against the extension of his pretrial detention in a Moscow espionage case is being denied. Gershkovich, a reporter for the Wall Street Journal, has been in detention for over a year after being arrested in Russia. One. Gas prices are dipping slightly. AAA puts today's national average at 366 a gallon. That's a penny less than yesterday's average. Drivers in Mississippi are enjoying some of the cheapest gas in the U.S. at 309 a gallon. This is WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Cash in on our 100th anniversary with the WDBO Payroll Payout. Your next chance at $1,000 happens tomorrow at 8 a.m. Listen for the keyword and then tap the Payroll Payout button in the WDBO app. It's our way of saying thank you for 100 incredible years. From your office to ours, we're breaking down today's big stories. Here's what you missed while you were at work. Evan Gerskovich, the reporter for the Wall Street Journal, will remain jailed on espionage charges until at least June after a Moscow court rejected his appeal. The combative hearing on Donald Trump's alleged violations of the judge's limited gag order ended with the judge saying that he will not rule from the bench on the DA's motion to hold Trump in contempt. A ruling will come later. Uh... The Justice Department announced it has reached a $138.7 million settlement deal with victims of disgraced former USA Gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser. They're blaming the Justice Department for failing to investigate the allegations early on that Nasser was uh, a dirty perv. Uh, and now you and I, the, the American taxpayers, are going to be on the hook to the tune of $138.7 million. In New York City, Donald Trump's uh, trial, here's how tabloid used catch-and-kill scheme to bury stories about him before the 2016 presidential election. This is a big deal. Laurel, Paul, uh, Greg, Joe Kelly, this affects all of us. The Federal Trade Commission votes in favor of adopting a historic and far-reaching ban on non-compete employment contracts. Oh, how interesting. (laughs) Uh, All of our bosses may want to look at that because that would typically mean uh, uh, for those that don't have or don't work with non-compete contracts, that means you generally, if if you were to leave, say, this radio station, you couldn't go work at a competing radio station uh, for a period usually of up to a year. You'd have to, you know, sit on the beach for a year. But they're saying uh, that that, that they're going to completely do away with no compete contracts. Uh, 
that is going to be very interesting for industries like radio and television, for sure. Uh, as I reported just a short time ago, a Douglas DC-4 plane has crashed into a river outside of Fairbanks, Alaska. Uh, early reports indicate that there were two people on board that vintage 1947-era plane. And claim Columbia University's anti-Semitism chaos is now prompting calls for tuition refunds. How, yeah, right. If, if you can't get to the school, why should you have to continue to pay tuition to that school? And if your tuition, if you're, if you're going to get a degree from that school, if your degree is going to be besmirched by the, the current scandals that are going on there, what value does that degree actually hold? All right, 844-580-WDBO or use the open mic in the WDBO app. If you're just joining us, we're talking about the Orange County School Board. They're meeting at this hour to decide whether or not to put a sales tax, uh, sales tax extension on the ballot come November. Joe, I'm going to correct you there. Every time somebody builds a new house and the Orange County developers evidently just hand out permits like water, those people have to pay an impact fee to the Orange County public school system. It's generally $1,000 per new home or business, and so they have plenty of resources due to all the new construction. A half a cent charge isn't a big deal. Right, so I... I, I you 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 say you're going to correct me. I, I didn't even bring up the property taxes, the ad valorem taxes. Uh, it, it is well known that property taxes uh, go to fund schools. Uh, this sales tax would be on top of the property taxes. Uh, I didn't bring it up because it's not part of the discussion that's that's taking place right now. The discussion right now is about whether or not they need an additional half penny sales tax the sales tax issue it's kind of the same old story that um they say it was going to be in place like for four or five years they've already renewed it two or three times once a tax gets in place they never let it go it's like the tolls on the turnpike and everything else oh yeah you are absolutely right about that absolutely so and and oftentimes uh the, the, those taxes stay in place because of that disingenuous marketing scam of saying by by voting yes, you will not be increasing your sales tax. And, and technically, it's true because it, it's a continuation of an existing tax. Uh, but it is very disingenuous because if you vote no, your taxes will decrease. Hey, Joe, I'm a little confused. When I go to get lottery tickets, I see a sign on the display there that says 49 million dollars went to the schools um why are we having to tax if the lottery is supposed to be giving schools money such a great great question i'm so glad you asked it uh this has been a a three card monty scam that has gone on in every state that allows a lottery system and what the state legislature needs to do Uh, And what they should have done with the implementation of a state lottery in Florida is say that any money that is generated from the lottery will be a surplus that goes to the state education system. But we but they should not, cannot, must not reduce the existing taxpayer dollars that are going to the schools. So what they've done, what what the state legislature has done and what local school boards have done uh, is they've reduced budgets where the lottery stepped in. So if the if the lottery contributed, you know, ten million dollars to our schools, then the state legislature would cut ten million dollars out. So it's a wash. It's it's a you know net net wash uh, because there's no additional money coming in. It's a it's a it's a it's a scam. That's all it is. 844-580-WDBO. Speaking about school and education and uh, the doddering old man uh, that really should be in a nursing home right now. He is uh, in Florida, or was at least. He was in Tampa. Uh, and he, he's got more ideas on how to spend your taxpayer dollars. You know, if I have my way in the next four years, I'm going to make community college free. <laughs> and it'll grow the economy. It won't cost the taxpayers. 
It won't cost the taxpayers. It'll grow the economy. It wants to make community college free. So that means, I guess, all the staff, employees, the professors, the teachers, uh, the the administrators, uh, they'll all just donate their time, donate their expertise. It'll all be free. Nothing is free, my friends. This is WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Breaking news to lively debates, covering the issues that matter to you. I make it a point to listen to Joe Kelly when I need to fully understand what's happening in the news. Now, the Joe Kelly Show on Orlando's News and Talk, WDBO. By the way, can we talk about something that everybody can relate to, or certainly a lot of people can relate to, and that is allergies, as you just mentioned, Paul Cross. Uh, So last week, I was just in misery all week last week from allergies. The week before that, I was feeling bad. I feel fantastic this week. My allergies are uh, totally gone now, uh, for the most part. I've got just a tiny little <coughs> cough and a little dry throat here and there, but I but I feel fantastic. And I, I don't know to what I should attribute the, uh, tr- getting this thing turned around because I changed a few things. So I was taking Claritin. And I switched, uh, I went to the pharmacy and I, I talked to the pharmacist. I'm like, hello, I would like to speak with a pharmacist. <laughs> and the, the pharmacy clerk turns to the pharmacist and she says, hey, it's for you. Like it's a phone call. <laughs> hey, it's for you. And so the pharmacist come, comes over and I said, look, I've been taking Claritin for about two weeks and I am miserable. Nothing is helping. I said, what would you suggest? And so she walked me over to the aisle and it really does work. If you ask a pharmacist for help, they really will help you. And so the pharmacist walked me over to the aisle and she picked out the generic versions. I was at a CVS. So she picked up the generic versions and handed me the generic versions of Flonase, which is the nasal spray, and Zyrtec instead of, instead of, um, Claritin. Claritin. Thank you. And I said, do I discontinue the Claritin or do I take both? And she said, no, discontinue the Claritin, which I didn't. I didn't continued the Claritin. I, I disregarded her advice. and You I t- took both the Claritin and the Zyrtec? And the Zyrtec, yes. I took one during the day and one at night. And uh, and uh, just until the that week was over, and and then and I, you're doing well now. <laughs> oh, I'm 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 doing awesome. And then and then on top of that, I got the nasal douche. So I started nasal douching, uh, and I nasal douched like three or four times. And I don't know if it was the nasal nasal douche or if it was the combination of the Flonase and the Zyrtec, but all of those three things combined, I feel fantastic. That's great. Is that what they call it, a nasal douche? Or is this just the Joe Kelly uh, interpretation of what it is? I think that's what they call it. I think they say, you haven't seen commercials? Buy the nasal douche now. Available at CBS, Walgreens, and Walmart. I'm pretty sure they call it like nasal irrigation or something like that. But yeah, am I calling call it, it by the wrong you name? Can call it nasal douching, I guess. So, well, you know what else, Joe, is that pets are really uh, susceptible to allergies right now too. Yes, well, our dog is going nuts with biting everything. We've got him on shots. We've got him on powder. Oh. We've got special pills and food and. We still had to take him to the doctor because he's got things all over him. And now he's got one of those little shame, the cone of shame. Oh, yeah, the cone of shame. That's... But, yeah, they, it's affecting humans and it's affecting animals as well. Our pets are suffering. What about nasal bidet? Is that better? Is a nasal bidet better than a nasal douche? Well, I think nasal douche nasal is more bidet. accurate. Yeah. I, I see, by the way, that there is a pretty significant fire that uh, is a result of this plane crash up in Alaska. A Douglas DC-4 carrying two people crashed uh, just outside of Fairbanks. Uh, uh, it's unknown if the two people survived the crash. Uh, I'm just startled that a DC-4 is still flying. A plane that hasn't been manufactured since 1947. That was the last time that that plane was manufactured. Uh, all right, so I, if, I hope my advice, I hope any of that helps you with your allergies if you're suffering from allergy problems like I have been suffering. Yes, over-medicate and douche yes, that, nasally. That's right. <laughs> that's that, that, is, that is the absolute key. Um, there is video that has now surfaced of some online character that goes by the name of Crackhead Barney, and she is confronting uh, Alec Baldwin, or the White Devil, as she refers to him, uh, in in her ex post, 
And I got to tell you, I dislike Alec Baldwin just as much as the next guy. Um, but I, I actually feel sorry for Alec Baldwin in this, in this exchange. The, Alec Baldwin is out minding his own business. He's just out at the local coffee shop somewhere in New York City getting a cup of coffee. And this breathtakingly obnoxious woman hounds him and hounds him. And it'll be tough to hear over the radio. It'll be tough to hear because this was recorded on a phone. Uh, but you can hear the clerk from the coffee shop trying to escort this woman out. Uh, Alec Baldwin is pretty much keeping his mouth shut. He is truly behaving himself. Uh, Alec Baldwin, who is not known uh, for having a calm demeanor, uh, he is known as a hothead. Uh, and and towards the end of this video, it's a little bit less than a minute long. Towards the end of the video, Baldwin finally knocks the phone out of crackhead Barney's hand. If you want to see the video, it's in this story in the WDBU app right now. But uh, here is the exchange. I did bleep all of the uh, the F words that she spoke, not Alec. Alec really kept his cool uh, in this. And I, I feel for Alec Baldwin. Alec, can you please stay free Palestine one time? Why did you kill that lady? You kill that lady and got no jail time? No jail time, Alec? No jail time, Alec. You put it. So you can just barely hear the, the store clerk saying to Alec, I'm sorry, I- I'm sorry. He's trying to, he's, the, the store clerk is trying to get her out. Alec Baldwin then opens the door for her so she can leave. Innocent people in jail, Alec Baldwin. I'm so sorry. Free Palestine, Alec, just one time, and I'll leave you alone. I'll leave you alone, I swear. Just say free Palestine yeah. one time. One time. One time. One time, Alec. You know, you know he's a criminal. You know he's a fucking criminal. Come on, Alec. Just say free Palestine one time. One time. Just one time. Please. And I'll leave you alone. Free Palestine. Fuck Israel. Fuck Zionism. Please say it. One time. Could you give me one quick favor? And I'm sure that of of the two there, because Alec Baldwin knocked the phone out of her hands, I would not be remotely surprised if he ends up being criminally charged uh, or civilly uh, taken to court in, in a civil court for violating her rights somehow, some way. Uh, that just breathtakingly obnoxious woman... I don't know if you can tell, but I'm gritting my teeth. Uh, I mean, she just agitates and agitates. She's just like that person that just pokes a stick and poke and poke and poke. And these are these these dreadful online personalities that that do anything for clicks. And they just are so obnoxious. It drives me batty how obnoxious these people are. And look. I get the desire for clicks. I live in that same world. I constantly am am posting content, hoping people will click on it. I'm hoping that content that I create uh, will will take off, will will be well received. But I, man, I'm not out there violating other people's decency. I'm not out there annoying other people uh, in favor of clicks. But Joe, it worked. Well, regrettably, you are you are here. You mentioned their call name. You yeah. me, you played the audio. You did exactly what she wanted, and now people are going to search for it and look at it and give her more clicks. Re- regrettably, that is how it works. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I I wanted to call her out for her despicable behavior. Uh, and she doesn't care. No, she doesn't. She'll continue her same despicable behavior. Uh, you've got to be pretty low and pretty rotten uh, to make Alec Baldwin come off as the good guy. And that's really what she has done. I'm Joe Kelly, 844-580-WDBO. You can use the open mic in the WDBO app. We'll continue the Joe Kelly Show right here on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Orange, Seminole, Osceola, and all of Central Florida. Join the conversation now by using the open mic in the WDBO app. Now, the Joe Kelly Show on Orlando's News and Talk, WDBO.
We are waiting for a launch tonight from SpaceX. It's a Falcon 9 with another payload of Starlink Internet satellites. Uh, the launch time is scheduled for 6.17 p.m. Uh, by the way, do we still have that uh, object on the road, Paul Cross? No, the object has been moved. I don't know what it was. but uh, Well, uh, evidently we do know. I, I've, I've, okay. got, I've got a source here for what Great. it was. So the object is a ladder, and it's been run over a few times, and uh, I certainly just missed it. Man, oh, that's dangerous. Yeah, that is so, so dangerous. Uh, and people need to be held accountable for securing their loads. Uh, because while a ladder could really screw up the front end of somebody's car, if you hit it with a motorcycle, uh, that's another thing altogether. And I know I've mentioned this story before anytime there's debris on the road. But I had a very, very dear friend uh, that on his motorcycle, and he was wearing a helmet, uh, but he hit a mattress. And you think, oh, mattress is nice and soft. It's fluffy. Yeah, no, it was not. It threw him from his bike and his helmet f- actually flew off and he suffered a traumatic brain injury and he's never been the same again. And that's oh. because some ding dong didn't secure their, their, their load. And that is so thoroughly dangerous. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm yeah, glad I've we're seen- able to alert people that there was, a, there was an object in the road. And I've actually seen tires bouncing on you know down the roadway and that's also yeah one hits a windshield one hits a motorcyclist things like that they're very dangerous when those things are you have to always be aware of your surroundings when you're driving you just defensive driving is the only way to go yeah absolutely so uh the launch is coming up here to see if they're listening in. Of course, be sure to follow Space Flight Now simply at Space Flight Now. So, all right, so that's going to be the Starlink 653. Uh, that's not the time. That's the launch number. Uh, the time of the launch is still scheduled for 617 p.m. Though, as I say that, the countdown clock is at 57 minutes, which would not be 617 p.m. Uh, so I don't know if they've pushed this back yet. I'm going to have to kind of dig into this and see if this has been pushed back uh, by a little bit because at this point it says T-minus 57 minutes. And we'll continue to keep an eye on this and uh, and let you know um, as it draws closer. Uh, let me just uh, click in and see. Um, yeah, everything I'm seeing still shows 617, so... Yeah, as I'm, um, hmm, as I'm as I'm looking at another another broadcast, it says T minus twenty minutes. So that would be that would be accurate. That sounds right. Yeah, and I don't know what the other launch is. Uh, that's the same launch. It's the SpaceX Falcon Nine. It's here at Cape, Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. But for some reason, their countdown clock is at a different time. A uh, delayed feed. <laughs> be horribly delayed uh, in that particular case. But you'll be able to hear that launch live, presuming it happens on time uh, at 6.17 p.m. It is going to uh, have a trajectory that goes straight out over the Atlantic. It's not going to It's not going to go straight up. It's going to go straight towards the Atlantic. The first stage booster is going to land uh, out uh, and on the... Um, which, which particular... Hang on. I got to get the right piece of paper. It is going to land on a... Sh- just read the instructions. That is the drone ship. Just read the instructions. And that will be about eight and a half minutes is that after the launch. how they name these drone ships? Like they're like racehorses? Yeah, they're all named very weird things. Short Fall of Gravitas is the name of one of them. Just read the instructions is another. Uh, they all have very odd names uh, for sure. And if you ever go out to Port Canaveral, you can see the fleet of SpaceX boats and ships and barges that they have out there. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see. So we'll stand by for that. And uh, we'll have more for you coming up in the next hour. Stay with us here. I'm Joe Kelly. You're listening to The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Now, from the Bogan Muns and Muns WDBO Traffic Center, auto accident to his Bogan Muns and Muns. Well, thank you to that WDBO listener who uh, used our open mic and told us that it was a ladder on the roadway there. I-4 westbound through downtown in the express lanes. Uh, thank goodness nobody was injured or even hit that be- or because 
it's been moved out of the roadway right now, so you're not going to have that to deal with. But you still have delays. I-4 eastbound starting about OBT through downtown, then from Parr to Lee and from just past Longwood, 434 area, all the way up to the bridge. I-4 West Bend is also crowded into downtown. ProTech Air Conditioning and Plumbing Service for honesty, integrity, and 100% customer satisfaction. Call ProTech 407-502-6263 or visit ProTechAC.com. From the WDBO Traffic Center. I'm Paul Cross. This is WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Talk and discussion on the latest breaking national news. Crude oil prices continue to fall. Local news. You're not going to have Disney have its own government in Central Florida. And stories that matter to you. Use the open mic in the WDBO app and let your voice be heard on the Joe Kelly Show. T minus 10 minutes now from a Falcon 9 launch. I hope you guys got a good view of that. Uh, you'll want to step outside and look that way. Uh, that's east, by the way. <laughs> You'll want to look east. Unless you're south of it, then you can look like northeast or north of it, then you will look southeast. But either way, it's still east out towards the Space Coast. Uh, we've got a lot of smoke in the air here in the Orlando area, so I don't know how well we're going to be able to see this. Uh, but it's a Falcon 9 uh, from SpaceX with another load of Starlink Internet satellites. Uh, again, we're T-minus less than 10 minutes from that launch. You'll be able to hear that live here on WDBO when it happens. Uh, the doddering uh, president is in Florida today. He went to Tampa to uh, to try to turn Florida from red to blue on the subject of abortion rights. Look, next week, one of the nation's most extreme anti-abortion laws will take effect here in Florida. It's criminalizing reproductive health care for before women even know whether they're pregnant. I mean, this is bizarre. I can put you can put a doctor in prison if he takes care of a patient, as you just heard some version of from Louisiana. You know, this extreme Florida law is going to impact four million, four million women in the state of Florida. Florida is one of the 20 front one states in America where America you can't get access you need for care. This adds up to one in three women throughout the United States of America have this limitation. For 50 years, the court ruled that there was a fundamental constitutional right to privacy. But two years ago, that was taken away. Let's be real clear. There's one person responsible for this nightmare and he's acknowledged and he brags about it, Donald Trump. <laughs> Look, I don't think we're going to let him get away with it, do you? No! And folks, in a sense, I don't know why he's, we're surprised by Trump. How many times does he have to prove we can't be trusted? <laughs> Trump bragged how proud he was to get rid of Roe v. Wade over it. He took credit for it. He said, there has to be punishment for women exercising the reproductive freedom. His words, not mine. He described the Dobbs decision as a miracle. Folks, it was no miracle. It was a political deal to get rid of Roe v. A deal. A political deal he made with the evangelical base of the Republican Party. Don't think he's making a deal right now with MAGA extremists to ban nationwide abortion in every single state because he's making it. In fact, the MAGA majority in the House of Representatives has introduced three separate b- bans, three separate bans to, cho- to ban choice nationwide in every single state, based on the state, each state. These bills are overwhelming, have overwhelming support in Republicans in Congress. But know this, as long as I have the power of the presidency, it's never going to happen. I have listened to that three times now, and I'm still not entirely clear on what he is saying. He uh, just is unable to articulate uh, any kind of a coherent message. Uh, I'm gathering that he's uh, that he's in favor of abortions, uh, that he wants Florida women to have lots and lots of abortions. Uh, and w- with regards to claims he makes about Donald Trump, uh, Joe Biden lies with such regularity that I, I don't even bother to fact check 
things that he says, claims that, that he makes. Now, f- for what it's worth, uh, I don't, I, I, I don't regularly trust things that Donald Trump says. I, I think that our elected leaders generally lie to us, hoping that we don't have an idea of what they're talking about, or that that we are just, you know, parts of a, a, a cult of personality. We like the person enough, or hate the other person enough that we don't care what they say. We're going to support them no matter what. As an example, when Joe Biden. Uh, during that speech said uh, this part, the crowd cheers for him. Sense. I don't know why he's, we're surprised by Trump. How many times does he have to prove we can't be trusted? How many times does he have to prove that we can't be trusted? We, the Democrats, that's what, he's, that's what Joe Biden just said. How many times that we can't be trusted? So, yeah, we can't trust what Joe Biden is saying. Uh, Biden also uh, is is wanting to hand out free uh, school, free college. You know, if I have my way in the next four years, I'm going to make community college free. (laughs) And it'll grow the economy. It won't cost the taxpayers. So then it would have, we would have public education from kindergarten through a four-year community college. You guys down for that? 844-580-WDBO. You can use the open mic in the WDBO app. That seems uh, a, a bit much, particularly to say that it's, uh, that it's going to be free community college because we all know that the, uh, the professors, the teachers, the staff, the administrators, they're not going to donate their time. They've got to be paid. So it's going to be taxpayer paid. And odds are good it's going to be the states that are paying it not the federal government. The states are going to pay the lion's share of it, and the federal government will probably pay a small portion of it if that were to come to fruition. Uh, But it is highly unlikely that would come to fruition, especially with the divided government that we have right now. And honestly, I don't know which would cost less. Joe Biden's vote-buying scheme of paying off everybody's student loan debt or just giving out free community college to everybody. I mean, free community college conceivably should be more affordable than uh, paying off everybody's student loan debt. But they're not mutually exclusive. Just because they're going to give free community college doesn't mean they're not going to pay off the remaining college debt. We got votes to buy, friends. We got votes to buy here. It's important. So we'll spend as much money as as we need to spend, it seems. We're T-minus four minutes away from the launch. All the assets seem to be getting in place. They've got the landing ship, the barge, uh, in place. The Just Read the Instructions is the barge. There are 23 Starlink Internet satellites on board this mission, which will add to the 5,851 that are already in orbit, with the ultimate goal of more than 20,000 Starlink Internet uh, in in low Earth orbit. Uh, I did not uh, shop talk here. Greg, I didn't prepare an alert. Would you push one? <clears throat> We're T minus three and a half minutes away from this launch. The Falcon 9 first stage booster that's supporting this mission is making its ninth launch. It previously launched NASA's Crew 6 mission to the International Space Station, and it's done five Starlink flights. It's going to land on the drone ship. Just read the instructions. This is the 300th booster landing to date. Not the same booster, but in all their boosters, this is the 300th time, if it lands successfully, the 300th successful booster landing, something that seemed impossible at first. But they got all the kinks worked out, and now uh, it seems like they can't fail. They seem to land that thing right in the middle of that target every single time. It is quite impressive. The 45th Weather Squadron forecast a better than 95% chance of favorable weather at liftoff. It does look very nice. There are some scattered uh, thin clouds out at the Cape. And we get a lot of smoke in, in the Orlando area here. The first stage booster will land about eight and a half minutes after the launch. We're checking several different sources here on this launch.
We are T-minus one minute and 50 seconds. Now coming into the final... Stage two, locks load complete. Now coming into the final minute and a half for the Falcon 9. Hear that call for stage two, locks load complete. The Falcon 9 is fully fueled with one million pounds of propellant. The venting you're seeing here are ground gas closeouts. Ground gas closeout. You hear that call out here? So we're coming to the final minute of the count. There'll be a few more call outs, and so in order to not step on those, we'll come back to the live chat on the other side of liftoff so we can keep our attention here on the mission. We're less than one minute away. But just note that do see those super chats. Very appreciative and we'll acknowledge them. Falcon 9 is in startup. In due time. No T minus 43 seconds and counting. SpaceX launch director will next give their go for liftoff. And we'll be headed towards a Falcon flight. SpaceX launch director, go for launch. There we have it. Just a little over 30 seconds now to the planned liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket. T-minus 20 seconds. Now, are you aware if they're still on track to break seconds. their record for number of launches in a year? I think they, I think they will 10, be, yes. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engine ignition and liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket on the 41st Falcon flight of the year. The vehicle has cleared the tower. Hoping that you're able to see that. Now 20 seconds into flight, let's listen to the roar of those nine Merlin 1D engines. We will not hear a sonic boom as the first stage booster is not coming back to land. It is going to be landing out of the Atlantic. So far, all nominal. Vehicle's about to pass through max Q, the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. It's a little tricky tracking today with the amount of clouds. There's the call for max Q. Rocket passing through the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. We're going to hit a number of events coming up in fairly rapid succession. First will be main engine cutoff or Miko at T plus 2 minutes and 26 seconds, followed by stage separation four seconds later. That will set up for second stage engine start or SES-1 and then fairing deployment just before the three-minute mark. Seeing some onboard camera views, the Falcon 9 here. We're T plus two minutes now. The first stage now booster. Twenty seconds from Miko. We'll land in about six minutes. After main engine cutoff, they'll separate from the booster. There you see Miko. At which point the big oh, flame stops. First stage booster has separated. Now the first stage booster at this and point... second stage engine start. The first stage booster, even though it is now separated from the, the rest of the vehicle, the first stage booster is still ascending. It is still going up. It doesn't immediately start to descend. Okay, it's some it hits an apex, views considering the a zenith, and then it starts to descend. Covering in the area. Payload fairing separation now underway. You can see those fairings falling away from the Falcon 9 second stage. 
The fairings Let's are the sunlight. Fairing here. separation confirmed. The fairings are the outer cover of the capsule that uh, under which the satellites and these are stored. These tracks coming from our friend Pete Carstens with Max Q Productions. There's onboard views from the Falcon 9's first and second stages on the right hand side of your screen. It'll be about an hour and a half from now before they start deploying those satellites, before the rocket is in place in the right orbit to release those satellites. We obviously will not be with this in an hour and a half. First stage. Those little puffs that you see there are the cold gas thrusters helping to adjust the attitude of the vehicle. At the same time, we can report that the hold has been released on the Electron rocket flight. Now, T minus 11 minutes, 36 seconds and counting to the liftoff of that vehicle. Now, that vehicle is launching from Taking the final Korea right now. Meanwhile, on the Falcon flight, we are less than two minutes away from the first stage entry burn beginning. Yeah, as he noted, there are two launches that are taking place within just 20 minutes of each other, uh, but on different sides of the Earth. if the clouds keep away, we'll be able to bring you the first stage entry burn here through Pete's tracking camera. Way to go, Pete. We're at T plus five minutes. That puts us about 90 seconds away from the landing of the first stage booster. Confirmation that the team has pulled go for that mission launch. You can see just to the left of the hypersonic grid fin there on the SpaceX onboard views, view of the Bahamas. So if we got some friends down in that area there's a chance to maybe be able to look up and see this Falcon 9 first stage booster. Yeah, it really you, you can see the uh, the blue green water of the Bahamas from the camera on the first stage booster as it starts its descent back down to With the, the uh, time of day and the brightness of the sky it may be a little tricky to, to the barge at this point to be able to exactly capture the first stage entry burn although we're going to give it our best here coming up on minute six of the Falcon flight. Now, how far offshore are these uh, remote barges? It varies. Uh, and in this one, uh, I don't know that I have that. Minutes, or excuse me, Hang on. less than 17 seconds from the entry burn beginning in real time. So he said the it was want to near the Bahamas. With these onboard camera views is the bottom of the screen, the SpaceX feed time. Coming out on about a 10, 12 second delay. Oh, you see the start of the entry burn in real time. Well done, Pete. Darn that, Pete. He is just on his game today. Stage one FCS is saved. Stage one entry burn startup. And there you see the start of the entry burn here on the SpaceX delay. Highly unlikely and you're seeing that from real time from the peninsula from from Florida. Very tricky to track through the clouds, but. That is a big part of this. It's that. cloudy. Stage one entry burn shutdown. You see the shutdown of the entry burn coming up on the landing burn now in just over a minute. The first stage booster is still booking it at 5,300 kilometers per hour. At an altitude of 25 Stage-2 kilometers. Saved. Once we have... The first stage booster here on this mission touched down on the drone ship. We can get confirmation of good orbital insertion. We will pivot back over to the rocket lab launch. So be sure to stay tuned for that. You get two for the price of one today. Now seven and a half minutes into flight by the SpaceX count. Should be about a minute away from the booster landing on the barge. Just read the instructions. Stage one transonic. Falcon 9, now transonic, traveling below the speed of sound. And you can see the speedometer continue to drop rapidly there on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Can I get that on a trifecta box? A... <laughs> Just read the instructions. Coming upon the start of the landing burn. Less than 10 seconds from now. 
The grid fins are out. They have been out steering the first stage booster. It should land at about 20 stage seconds. One burn. You see the landing burn now getting underway? At this point, you can just, just barely make out the, the barge, the drone ship. Stage one landing leg deploy. Coming down quick. And it has uh, successfully landed right And with that, in stage one landing confirmed. This is landing number 300 for SpaceX. Unbelievable. The 300th time a Falcon booster has landed on either a drone ship or safely on land. Absolutely amazing. I will never not be amazed by their ability to do that. Uh, less than nine minutes after launch, the booster is safe and secured on board that barge. And as long as the uh, waves aren't too bad, they have lost a couple of boosters that landed successfully uh, but were toppled uh, on the barge uh, en route back to uh, Port Canaveral. Now, they're they're queuing up the other launch. Seconds. Until there's a two-second burn of the Falcon 9's upper stage. Yeah, they're, I'm watching this other launch as well. But this one is out in Korea. It's on the other side of the planet. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that one and, and let you know. I'm Joe Kelly. You're listening to The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. In-depth segments on topics that matter to Orange, Seminole, Osceola, and all of Central Florida. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. I love your show every night. You're doing great, bud. Well, we just saw the successful launch of a Falcon 9 here from Cape Canaveral. And as you heard the announcer, they said that this is a, today is a twofer. And there's a second launch that's now T-minus two minutes away from launch. And I mentioned it's in uh, South Korea. I was mistaken on that. It's a South Korean payload. But the launch is actually in New Zealand. The launch is called the Beginning of the Swarm. And it's from the Mayhai Peninsula in New Zealand. Uh, and it's the Rocket Lab Electron Rocket with a pair of satellites on behalf of both NASA and the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. One of these is going to be a uh, solar sail that they're going to test in outer space. They're also using uh, some artificial intelligence, uh, some a couple of satellites that are going to be launched with this. It's uh, got multiple payloads here. And we don't typically take launches from around the world, but uh, since we're getting a bit of a twofer here today, we thought we would listen in uh, to, the, to the New Zealanders as they prepare to launch this. They're now... Seconds. A minute and 15 Followed out from launch. Stage separation at you could step seconds. outside to try to look for this one, but man, you're going to have to have some really, really, really good vision. Night at T plus two minutes, 31 seconds. Followed by fairing separation just after the three minute mark. And and one minute away from launch. You could see the clamp arms on the transporter. Stage one and stage two tanks are pressed for flight. Have opened. Just like the launch we heard a moment ago, this is an uncrewed or unmanned launch. And will those, this also have a returning? Nope. No, yeah, only only SpaceX does that. There there are no other launch companies that are currently returning boosters for reuse. Let's listen in for this final terminal count. This booster will 10, splash in the ocean. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Very much like one of those little uh, Estes model rockets that we used to fly as kids. Stage one propulsion is nominal. The beginning of the swarm has begun its ride to space with that clean electron liftoff from LC-1. Electron's trajectory will take it up and over the South Pacific Ocean as it heads away from the launch pad. 
I Our hope. first mission milestone will be Max Q, otherwise known as maximum aerodynamic pressure. I hope she's able to get that speech impediment worked out the there. It's so unfortunate. Can we just listen to her yeah. talk for the next We're coming up on minutes. that moment now just... and expecting to hear the call for Max Q shortly. Okay, we'll stay till Max Q and that's it. Free battery discharge, no, no. Get Max Q. All right, that's it. We're done. They hit Max Q. Congrat- congratulations to them for uh, the launch. That's pretty cool. Two for launch. Uh, two launches in back to back here. Not here, but here on the radio, at least. I'm Joe Kelly. Thank you so much for listening. Coming up next. Oh, coming up next. Uh, hang on. I got this. Five foods. If you want to live to 100, five foods to avoid. Five foods to avoid. And I bet all five of them are on Laurel's favorite foods list. So hang on. That's coming up next here on The Joe Kelly Show. This is WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. News, weather, traffic, all the things you want on your drive home. Plus, Joe Kelly being, well, Joe Kelly. Now, the Joe Kelly Show on Orlando's News and Talk, WDBO. All right. Joe Kelly Show, assemble. We need the round table. Laurel, Paul, and Greg. So I was reading this piece by Dr. Walter Longo. Walter. Not, he's, it's not Walter. It's Walter with a V. Uh, Dr. Walter Longo, PhD, professor in gerontology and director of the University of Southern California's Longevity Institute, giving an interview with the New York Times. And he tells you the five foods to avoid if you want to live to 100. Now, I, I am going to live to 100. I don't know how to break it to you, but I am going to live to 100 years old. I tell my wife that all the time. This just in. <laughs> Joe Kelly will live to 100 years old. And anybody who knows me are like, that's <laughs> not going to happen. Yeah, no, seriously, I am. I'm going to be 100 years old. So here are the five foods to avoid. I want to know if these foods are on your list. Number one, white pasta. What? White pasta? How do you survive huh. without white pasta? As opposed to blue pasta? Or well, wheat? Pasta? I think they mean. I think. I think that's what they mean is wheat pasta. So squid ink pasta. <laughs> so white pasta. I literally had white pasta for lunch. I don't Me know, too. I don't know how I can because I had egg noodles. Is egg noodles white pasta, or is that egg pasta? I don't know. I, that would be very very hard to not have pasta. Could you guys do without pasta? No, it's mm, my favorite no. food pretty much ever. Yeah, yeah. absolutely not. I mean, well, if this is this the top five? Is that what you said, Joe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, this is five foods. Yeah. Okay, so for every every one that we do, we even knock ten years off. So now I'm going to be ninety. Yep. What's next? Soda. Mm, soda. Not a big soda drinker. I'm not a big soda drinker. The only time I'll have soda typically is if if I'm at a restaurant. Uh, but at home, all I drink is water and then sometimes milk. But I I typically have a bucket of water from which I am constantly draining. Number three is ice cream. Can we ice go back cream. to you pu- constantly draining buckets yeah. of water? Yeah, <laughs> can we address that put, again? That you like to drink water. That you just kind of passed right over that, and Sorry. we need to go back to that. I just Let's drink back. lots. I, Pivot. I, I have like an IV. I just put it in, and I just drain water right into me. So uh, I drink lots of water. I installed a trough in yes. my garage that right. I just drink all of my water out of. Okay, ice cream. I Now, I... I I I don't eat ice cream. Well, it's ice cream and soda. I do have them once in a while, but it's not like on my daily routine or even my weekly routine. But they're talking about avoiding it all together, right? Yeah. Never okay. eat it. Never. Never eat it. Number okay. four is pie. I've never been a big pie eater. I've never really found a pie that made me say, oh my gosh, I have to have this pie. Cake, on the other hand, oh my gosh, I could... Uh, I, I could go through Forrest Gump style, Bubba Gump style, how many different cakes I like. I mean, there's just. But how could pie be on the list and not cake? Well, what I mean, makes you think cake isn't on the list? Okay. I have guess I, I don't... finished the list yet? You, no, you have not, okay. sir. Please go ahead. I love apple pie. Let's not skip over pie. Let's not just pish pie. I like pie. pie. I so, love apple pie, chocolate cream pie. All right, Bubba Gump. So, so he expands that commercial baked pies, commercially baked pies, 
have partially hydrogenated oils. In 2015, the FDA deemed them as unsafe. As of January 2020, U.S. food manufacturers can't sell foods with partially hydrogenated oils. Yet, as the Cleveland Clinic points out, that's not the end of the story, as small amounts of trans fats are still in foods like pies and pie crusts. So, pies are bad. So, it's the crust, evidently, more so than the pie is what I'm gathering. It's the hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated oils. And number five on the list, and I know Laurel is not currently eating this, hot dogs. Right? Because hot dogs are the processed meats like bologna, which is disgusting. Bologna. Bologna. It just is a weird word to even say. Bologna. But, Laura, like, you're not eating it because you're pregnant, right? Well, I'm allowed to eat it if you warm it up. So I'm not eating raw hot dogs. But if you cook the hot dogs, I can eat them. I like hot dogs. I'm going to eat them either way. I have never been a hot dog fan. Never liked them. Uh, processed meats like hot dog sausage and some deli meat should be avoided as much as possible. They've been implicated in cancer and can promote heart disease. Research published in 2021 linked processed and red meat consumption with higher odds of developing multiple cancers, including lung and colon cancer. So you might ask, what should we be eating? Oh boy, here you go. If you want to live to 100, eat lots of nuts and seeds. Mm, what am I, a bird? Nuts and seeds. <laughs> Extra virgin olive oil. One of my, one of my twins, uh, Black and Decker, uh, Decker, he takes olive oil every day. He drinks extra virgin olive oil. He'll just drink a couple gulps of extra virgin olive oil. I, could really? not, I couldn't possibly do that. That's not any weirder than the people that drink apple cider vinegar every day, which I know is another big health kick yeah. thing. Uh, Next on the list of things you want to eat for a longer life is cruciferous vegetables. To which we all ask, what in the world is, is, is cruciferous? What does that mean? Hey, Google, what does the word cruciferous mean? Here's the definition of cruciferous. Relating to or denoting plants of the cabbage family. Brassicaceae, formerly cruciferae. No! Oh, that's the worst kind of vegetables. Well, it that's gets like rid Brussels of all the gas sprouts. in your body. Like, oh, so it's broccoli and arugula. If you make your Brussels sprouts with no, extra don't, virgin don't, olive oil, don't, it's perfect. Don't, don't tell me any possible way that Brussels sprouts taste good. Roasted with a little salt no, and pepper? absolutely mm. not. I will never be a part of this, this cabal of people who try to sell <laughs> that Brussels sprouts can in any possible way. You can dip them in granulated sugar and they're still going to be terrible. <laughs> we just need to pull away from the generation that only boiled their Brussels sprouts. You need to roast them. They're delicious no, I've roasted. tried them in every conceivable way way and their cruciferous vegetables are the worst next broccoli and cauliflower you don't like either of those um i don't mind cauliflower if it is raw and broccoli i don't mind if it's raw cooked i hate them i hate cooked cruciferous vegetables i'm gonna get that tattooed berries is next on the list we should eat lots of berries strawberries blueberries they're the powerhouses for your body they're loaded with antioxidants fiber magnesium vitamin c and vital nutrients and lastly you should eat Fatty fish. So I want some big fatties. Just some fish that are just big fatties. Fatty fish. Smoke, smoke a big fatty tonight? Is that like, what you're going to do? Like salmon and mackerel. I'm going to smoke me a big salmon fish tonight. Just a big fatty salmon. They have high levels of omega-3 fatty acids. So those are good for you. So now, now you have everything you need to live to 100. You're welcome. I'm Joe Kelly. You're listening to WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. From the jazz age to the information age, WDBO has been there. Join us in saluting a century of broadcasting excellence. Happy 100th WDBO, the soundtrack to Orlando's history. In your lifespan, isn't more important for the quality of your life, not the quantity? You know, do you want someone wiping your behind? Or would you rather be able to go out the way you can take care of all your own faculties? Oh, my gosh. Who wouldn't want someone wiping their behind? That's I'm so tired of that. That seems like the, the way to go, if you're asking me. Joe Kelly. Yes, yes. You've never tried Brussels sprouts fried in bacon grease with onions? 
You're missing out, buddy. Oh, my gosh. Laurel, tell her why that's wrong. Because you also hate bacon. Yes, bacon is terrible. I had a uh, Cobb salad from Wendy's earlier, and in the Cobb salad, it comes with bacon. I literally picked the bacon out and threw it in the garbage uh, because bacon is terrible. I don't like bacon, and coating it in Brussels sprouts, yuck. I mean, every, every part about that just sounds absolutely terrible. And we'll leave on that note. I'm Joe Kelly. Look for the Joe Kelly Show podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll catch you back here on the radio tomorrow, 5 till 7 on WDBO. Bring excitement to your landscape with proven winners, Color Choice Shrubs. These flowering shrubs and evergreens have been trialed and tested by experts to make sure they look better. And bloom better, so they're just as easy to care for as what's in your landscape now. But a whole lot more colorful and interesting. Look for proven winners, color choice shrubs, in the distinctive white container at your local garden center. Or learn more at provenwinnerscolorchoice.com.